The age of the £10 pom is a long time ago now. And with Western Australia desperate to get Brits over, let's have a look back at what life was really like and why people made the decision to move to Australia as £10 poms. Australia is the number one destination for British migrants. But the dream of a new life down under is limited to around 30,000 a year. There was a time when Australia paid Britons to come. It was one of the biggest planned migrations of the 20th century. In the 50s and 60s, one million people were sold the dream of a modern British way of life in the sun. A lot. Talk about a culture shock. I, I absolutely hated it. You were still a pommy bastard. <laughs> I think they resented us very, very much. To entice them, £10 was all it cost. That seemed to me to be an amazing adventure for the, for the price. I reckon it was the best £10 ever spent. <laughs> It's really interesting to, to think, and this completely makes sense, why some people thought it was the worst decision they've ever made, and some people clearly thought it was the best decision they've ever made. One quarter of those that came didn't agree and fled back home. This is the story of nine Britons who took the migration gamble. But which country would end up claiming the hearts of these ten-pound palms? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were here. I've been wasting time and I've got a lot of very important things to tell you. I want to talk to you about immigration, particularly immigration from the United Kingdom. Following World War II, Australia believed it needed to populate or perish. Despite the end of the war, there was still a fear of the yellow peril. The Australian government wanted only white British stock to help build up and defend the nation. That doesn't make it sound quite so good when he puts it like that. Only yellow, st uh, only white stock and the yellow peril. This was definitely filmed a while ago. These are the people we want. And the more of them, the better. Beginning in 1947, the £10 scheme received financial support from both sides. Britain was happy for the Commonwealth to be populated by its own. And for many working class Britons, migration offered a fresh start after six gruelling years of war. So when I said to Anne, would you like to go to Australia? I had to hold her up. <laughs> Albert Lauer grew up in the slums of Paddington in London and joined the army at 18. He was captured twice and spent three years in a prisoner of war camp. The experience took its toll. I think Anne had to have a lot of patience with me. I was apt to go for alcohol, you know, to smooth things over, but she... she was very good to me. But we got along fine. Can I have a rise in my pay? No. <laughs> <laughs> my husband decided. <laughs> and whatever, whatever he said went. He said, we're going to Australia. The £10 scheme favoured young working class families like Elizabeth Britton's from Oxford. It was a welcome chance to escape the desolation of post-war England. When you put it like that, I think it makes perfect sense why why people wanted to leave the United Kingdom and, and go to Australia. You know, you've just had the devastation of, of the world war and, you know, cities were destroyed because of the Blitz. They were destroyed. You know, I obviously wasn't there, but we have really learned about it in school, on TV, documentaries and whatnot. Um... So we know the devastation. And so if you think, well, what future is there here? And then an Aussie comes over and says, well, this is what you could have. You know, this is better. Everything's better. You, you know, you can understand why the people would have thought, yeah, maybe that gives us a future that we don't see here. Well, I, 
I wasn't sorry to leave it behind itself. It was so you... There was nothing, it, it seemed. There you go. You know, food was short, housing was short. They hadn't recovered by then. There was still a lot of rationing. Sick of the queues and ration books and square-inch packets of fats. We've had six years of thinking of essential food in terms of ounces. So perhaps it's not unreasonable we should think about those places overseas where there seems to be plenty of nearly everything. It was awful. There was no homes. There was no houses. There was, houses. There was a whole streets obliviated. I mean, you've got to understand, I couldn't foresee a future for us. I think it was certainly the right time to be trying to get Brits over to Australia. And if we quickly look now, Western Australia, especially, and I've seen it all over, all over the news and on um, the morning TV programs with Australians that have come over and are, are wanting, wanting Brits to go over to Western Australia to work. And when you look at the timings of, of the, the £10 POM, it was a case of your cities are wrecked. You're on rationing. You can't have the luxuries that you would like to have. Um, even as working class people. But, you know, you can have it over in Australia. I just want to compare it to now. Well, maybe now is the right time to, for Australia to be asking for, for Brits to come across. You know, we've gone through years of Brexit. We see everything is going up in price. And I know things are going up in price everywhere. But it is really hitting us over in the UK. Um, you know, prices are high um I, i've i've gone i've gone through in other videos how much higher like petrol is 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 about double um over here gas and electric is about double over here um and it, so it's tough and you know so with brexit with the the rising prices with the tories in government um it's it's it is a little bit rough so maybe now not quite to the same extent as as after the world war but maybe now is a good time for Western Australia, for, you know, to start off with, to be asking for more Brits to come, to fill those spaces in the workforce. Australia House London is the gateway to Australia, land of the future. Here, scores of thousands of men and women are seeking a wider future on British soil. We went to Australia House in London and they showed us pictures and films, films and said that we'd have no worries about accommodation, you'd have a house and blah, blah, blah. Australia pulled out all stops to entice its quota of 70,000 British oh, migrants a year with propaganda in glorious Technicolor. And that, that's the thing straight away, isn't it? That, you know, the images that you've just been seeing and I've been seeing, you know, the UK in black and white, buildings knocked down, rationing. But then if the Aussies, you go to Australia House and you were seeing, you know, in colour, you were seeing the, the gorgeous beaches, the, the leisure time, the, the, the buildings that are still in one piece. How, that must have been so easy to sell that, that new life to people. It did the job with 400,000 hopeful Britons applying to sign on in the first year. They did make it look... They made it look better than what it really was. I, I promised Dan that, you know, if we did like it, we'd come back. The catch with the £10 deal was you had to stay for at least two years or pay the full fare home. This didn't deter people like Kathleen Upton from Hastings. She was drawn to Australia's warmer climate because her daughter had severe asthma. But the doctor eventually, she was three years old then, said, you know, if only you could go to a, a, somewhere where it's warmer, because it, we, we'd come through such a dreadfully cold winter that year. And I thought, imagine never to feel cold again. So That's it, not it true. looked absolutely no. utopian, really. There were several hurdles before Kathleen and her husband would be accepted as £10 POMs. Everyone had to undergo an extensive medical examination and personal interview, even young children. 
like Kathleen's daughter, Vivian. I said, why did you have to see her? She's only three years old. And he said, well, she might have been mentally handicapped or coloured. Oh. I didn't realise quite how strong they were against anybody with that, that wasn't pure white, you know, they're completely Aryan. See, that puts a real bad spin on it, doesn't it? You know, the Aussies were looking for just white people, no colour, no, no, ah, oh, this sounds quite, no, I'm not going to say it, but it stinks a little bit of, of a certain German political party. Um, oh, no, that doesn't, sorry, that sounds bad, doesn't it? But that seems to be the way she's saying it. They only wanted what they wanted. And it was very strict. Wow. That's that's actually shocked me because I didn't realise uh, to what extent they were selective. I didn't know how selective they were. And oh, that's rough. That's actually quite bad. It was known as the White Australia Policy, a series of immigration acts starting in 1901, which meant blacks or Asians need not apply. Anglo-Saxons would slip invisibly into the Australian way of life, or so it was hoped. Britain was soon launching its own campaign to encourage its citizens to go forth and multiply. The emigration ship looks like a passport to a land of promise. The men who emigrate are all sons of the motherland, Great Britain, that always did and always will breed a race second to none in the world. It is, it is, isn't it? It is no different. That is no different to the Nazi politics and, and their beliefs in white supremacy. You know, the Aryan race. Oh, man. That's awful. The whole £10 palm, the whole, um, the whole Australian immigration thing now has really taken a dark turn in in my eyes how you know how can we how can, i say we not me obviously but i mean we as a sort of a the, the uk and, and the allied forces be looking down on say the the nazi germany when we literally then go and do pretty much the same thing without the killing door oh. During the 50s, almost 300,000 British citizens bet their futures on the £10 scheme. That number would more than triple by the end of the 60s. What lies ahead of them? People awaiting a chance to live again. For newlyweds John and Sylvia Cannon from London's East End, the decision to go to Australia would take their lives in a direction they could never have imagined. It was a maiden voyage, so there was... Um, little ships and oh, the press and Water it was a, fountains. Yeah, it was a big send-off. John left his job as a car salesman in London. He was a keen cameraman and filmed their ten-pound adventure. I don't think it was our intention to stay in Australia. I think we were going there for the two years that we were required to go there, and then we were going to move on to Canada for a year or two, and then maybe go back to England again and settle down. But I think it was more the fun of just travel and saying, let's go, let's do it. Also, only cost £10. Pounds. Um, and that seemed to me to be an amazing adventure for the price. Few could have afforded the real cost of the voyage. At £120, pounds, it was nearly half a year's wages for working class people like John Cannon. For most, it was the first time they had travelled abroad. For some, it would be a final farewell. We were lucky because we were able to bring our family on board the ship to show them around. You know, it's very impressive. And then they went ashore and I remember hugging my dad. Uh... That was the last time. It's... It's, it's, this is the thing, and I, and bear in mind, say, looking back in the 60s, 
it really was too far to go back and too far to visit. Um, so it, so it, I, you know, with with this guy here saying it was the last time he ever saw his parents. Wow, that's that's rough. It is really rough, isn't it? Um, and now, obviously, these days, granted, flights are still stupidly expensive because we're trying to wait for him to go down to to fly to Australia again this year. But it's easier to it's easier now. You've got the technology to even be in contact, but it's still a ridiculously far away place that costs a lot of money to get to um, a day or more transport as well. It's not like popping, you know, popping down the road to see it, see your mum for a cup of tea or something like that. So you can understand why it'd be a tough decision. You can understand why it'd be an easy decision that, you know, that, that we saw right at the start with the, your houses are destroyed, you're on rationing and then, Australia are, are, are giving you free houses, you know, as much food as you like. Uh, you know, life is being portrayed as the perfect life, sun, sea, uh, sand, and, you know, prosperous. I do think that actually, um, I think someone highlighted it in here that they sort of overpromised because life isn't technically what they were showing. They were showing the best bits in a compilation. So, you know, you can understand why people got there and thought, well, this isn't what I was, so this isn't what I was sold. So you can certainly understand why people went back, people left and went back. You know, it's, it's a, it, especially back then, it was probably a massively different culture in life. Um, oh man. Yeah. Very, this, this has been a weird video. Sorry, Pixie's here as well. Um, this has been a really weird video because there's the highs the lows, the controversy, I didn't think I would be getting very angry, but I did at some point. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy to think. And, you know, I think if you went from the UK now to say Western Australia, like they're wanting, I don't think the cultural differences will be as strong as it was possibly back then with all the technology we've got now. But I still think it will be a completely different way of life. Um, and how many Brits could manage it? How many Brits can, you know, would comfortably move away from family and friends? And, you know, you know, it, you look at it in my situation, my, you know, Charlie, my wife has, has a consistent work. I've got two businesses. We've got the cats. We've got the dog, you know, up upheaving all of that isn't easy you know and that's just me as an example really interesting video thank you so much for watching i hope you found it interesting and maybe got the little shock um about the white issue um that i got as well please do let me know your thoughts in the comments like and subscribe if you want to support the channel buy me a coffee join my membership on youtube buy some merchandise and go to charlieandrob.com and I will catch you next time.